Timothy Osprey, a hunter superbly accomplished in the fine art of catching fish. follows a season in the lives of these spectacular fishing hawks. Winter in Atlantic Canada. For people living in the remote fishing community of Bellevue, Newfoundland, the coming of spring is marked by a welcome cry heard high in the sky. It's the male osprey, fresh back from a long migration, performing his courtship dance. Looping through the air and brandishing a fish, he advertises his hunting skills to his partner, who's already settled at the nest they've shared for years. Mature breeders like this pair are often the first to arrive at Bellevue, but by the end of April up to 40 others will join them, completing a journey of more than 2,000 miles from the coastal swamps of South America. Some, like this one, are first-time breeders, returning to their place of birth. But finding suitably tall nesting trees isn't easy. Many of the best sites are already taken, and evicting residents is quite a challenge. The rightful owner is quick to see off intruders. Nesting trees around Bellevue are highly prized by these hawks because they overlook fabulous fishing grounds. Vast stretches of coastline backing onto a broad estuary which is fed by countless rivers. These fertile waters, first exploited by Europeans in the early 19th century for their huge runs of salmon, still provide a living for local families and support a wealth of other life. Parts of the estuary are extremely shallow, particularly at low tide, and this provides good opportunities for surface feeders like gulls and ospreys. But with the breeding season approaching, our pair need to put their hunting skills to a very different test. Months of winter gales have ravaged the nest, so before egg laying can begin, it needs rebuilding. Dead sticks are the foundation for the nest, but ospreys will also gather items as unlikely as bicycle tires, television aerials, bones, even rubber boots.
they take most of what they want straight from the trees by the simple method of smash and grab. Both birds help, but it's the smaller male who does the bulk of the work, fetching up to a hundred loads a day. As the nest nears completion, the male also plucks lichens as a soft lining. But this is a tricky business, especially with long curved talons. It's easy to get into a pickle. Finally, the male breaks free. And while she shapes the nest to her liking, he concentrates on finishing the job with true osprey panache. This seven-foot branch might seem like overkill, but these northern breeders must ensure their nests can withstand high winds, which can sweep through here at any time. So work continues until the nest is four feet deep and seven feet wide, the size of a double bed. In the few days prior to egg laying, the male carefully guards the female and mates with her often. Ospreys can breed from the age of three or four, but most don't find a suitable nest and partner until they're much older. Then they usually bond for life. The female lays up to four eggs and does most of the incubating, leaving her mate free to roam. And roam he does. With one clutch guaranteed, he visits other females when their partners are off fishing, hoping for a sneaky mating. But she's having none of it. Fish hawks are found across the world, in all continents except Antarctica. But Eastern Canada supports more breeding pairs than anywhere else. Bellevue is special, not just because of its broad, shallow estuary, but also because its waters drain through a narrow channel into bountiful seas. For just a few months each year, migratory fish move inshore from the deep Atlantic and invade this estuary to spawn and feed, helped on their way by strong tidal currents. In these mineral-rich waters, blooms of plankton and food swept down from forest streams provide nourishment for great shoals of wrasse and young cod. Cod usually lie low in the deeper channels of the estuary, but better camouflaged fish like flounders are able to harvest the shallower sand flats. Each spring, many come and feast on an abundance of crabs, snails and worms. Flounders and sculpins are slow-moving fish. For safety, they depend on stealth and concealment. And in Bellevue, of all places, it pays to have eyes in the back of your head. Fish hawks are crafty hunters. With eyes which can see through the surface glare, they scan for telltale signs of life, perhaps a ripple, 
a puff of sand, or maybe a flash of scales. For more than a hundred feet up, he abandons himself to gravity. This flounder is lucky to escape, given the high osprey strike rate. But he's not out of danger, for the commotion caused by the splash can sometimes attract other takers. In a favorable wind, ospreys can hoist fish almost their own weight from the water. But to get fully airborne, they must lighten the load. Flounders are a staple for Bellevue's fish hawks, and during the breeding season, the female depends almost entirely on the male to provide for her. Despite her impatience, the male often helps himself before handing the catch over. Hunting burns up a lot of energy. During the six-week incubation, the male has it easy, bringing in just a couple of fish a day. But all too soon, he'll really have his work cut out. Ospreys breed all along the Atlantic coast of North America. But Newfoundland is just about the furthest north they go. Summer here is brief but bountiful. And for both ospreys and fishermen, it's as if a year's worth of life is crammed into a few magical months. In June, the fishermen of Bellevue harvest the increasing numbers of flounders moving inshore as bait for their crab and lobster boats. At this time of year, they also notice ospreys visiting the estuary more often, ferrying fish past their homes and up into the hills. With less time to indulge himself, the male arrives with a very fresh catch. There are new demands to be met. He now has a family to feed. Making the handover can be tricky. Live flounders are slippery customers. Two of the three eggs have so far hatched, and with tender care, their mother provides tiny mouthfuls. Her strong hooked beak is ideal for tearing the tough flesh. Fish hawks hatch with a covering of fine down. It's important insulation, for even in summer, it can get very chilly up in the nest. Storms are perhaps the greatest danger newborns face because bad weather prevents the adults from hunting and the chicks can starve. But a fair day like this is ideal for ospreys. Even in these conditions, hunting has its obstacles. There are thieves everywhere. Greater blackback gulls.
Ospreys are normally faster than gulls, but not if they're weighed down by wet wings and a heavy catch. But they are quicker on the turn. The gull is totally outmaneuvered by the osprey, but it doesn't give up. It knows a dirty trick or two. The gull's tenacity has paid off, but the ospreys needn't worry. There are plenty more fish in the sea, especially now. It's early July. A time when foggy weather and screaming flocks of gulls usually mean one thing to the people of Newfoundland. The capelin have arrived. Capelin are small migratory fish which each summer move inshore by the million. They're plundered from above and below. whales come all the way from the Caribbean to seek out the shoals. Such easy takings are never overlooked by fish hawks. Because ospreys must search far and wide for fish, it's impractical for them to defend feeding territories. In Bellevue, at least a dozen pairs live in close proximity, and it's sometimes possible to see ten birds hunting the same stretch of water, especially when the capelin are in. This glut of food is a timely boost for the osprey family, who now have three chicks sporting their first feathers. With growing appetites, they now need four meals a day. But for the time being, at least, they'll be well catered for. For several weeks, waves of capelin hurl themselves onto Newfoundland's beaches to spawn. Only a few years old, it's their last sacrificial act. Greater blackback gulls and herring gulls capitalize on this breeding frenzy. Such is the commotion that it sometimes attracts other takers. Bald eagles. Unlike ospreys, eagles are territorial, 
and just one family has the feeding rights at Bellevue. Bald eagles are North America's largest birds of prey, three times heavier than ospreys. To cater for their great size, they rely on a broad diet of fish, seabirds, and carrion. And their eyesight is so sharp that few good opportunities pass them by. By massive wings, the eagle is quick to gain on the smaller hawk. Driving the osprey higher and higher, the eagle tries to force it to release the fish. But the osprey won't give up easily. This contest is down to stamina. In parts of Canada where bald eagles are common, ospreys suffer heavily from piracy. But here, such conflicts are rare. Fish are plentiful, which is just as well. Feeding five-week-old chicks is hard work. Growing faster than at any other stage of their lives, the youngsters now demand at least six meals a day. In the final weeks of their development, the chicks receive a continuous supply of fresh fish to the nest. For this, the male works flat out, stretching his endurance to the limit. Once the chicks are fully grown, their parents suddenly neglect them and they start to lose weight. But all for a good reason. They must now be encouraged to leave the nest. There are still many lessons to be learned before the season's out. On a windy morning in late August, the young fish hawks prepare for their first tentative flight. Confidence briefly deserts them, but then one decides to take the plunge.
For now, the youngsters will stay near the nest and be cared for by their parents. But with growing confidence, they'll travel further and further afield until eventually all family ties are broken. September brings change to Bellevue. The summer visitors move out as bracing northerly winds sweep in. The estuary, which has been a focus of life all season, is gradually deserted. Many fish now head for the open ocean in search of new feeding grounds. Those that stay behind will soon be protected by a roof of ice. As winter returns to Bellevue, the parting cries of ospreys echo through the hills. One by one they go, traveling alone on the long haul back to South America, chasing their endless summer. Last to leave are this season's newest recruits. They're faced with one final challenge, to graduate in the fine art of catching fish.